Hi, welcome to A Beginner's Guide to Rebirth. I am really delighted to have you along for this class. And I want to just start with an overview video to explain the main ideas of the course and what you can expect to find in it. So first of all, the really main idea of this course is that we all experience transformations, transitions in our lives, or at least we have the opportunity to experience these things, but often we're not really able to take full advantage of them. Often we have a hard time with transitions or transformations because they're threatening to our sense of self or sense of identity. And there's good reason for that because a transition means that we're changing, whether it's a big way or a small way, we're becoming someone slightly different from who we are. So the main purpose of this course is first of all, to connect you with other people who are going through transitions too. And second, to let you know that there's a structure to transitions and just knowing that there's a structure actually can already be helpful in managing that transition and getting the most out of it for your spiritual growth. This course really puts two bodies of material in dialogue with each other. The main body of material that we're going to be engaging with is the Tibetan Buddhist teachings on what are called the Bardo states. So these are teachings on, um, traditionally they're thought of as teachings on the death and rebirth process, but actually they cover all of life. And we're going to be using those teachings to frame the materials in the course. So that's the first thing we're going to talk about. The second thing we're going to talk about is the narrative structure of a transition. I'm going to be drawing from Joseph Campbell's work on the hero's journey. And we're going to talk about the stages of the hero's journey, which also is all about rebirth and transformation. In a way, the Bardo teachings and the hero's journey teachings are both really about sort of a, a narrative arc of leaving what's familiar, being in a, in a space, whether metaphorically, literally, mentally, spiritually, physically, a space in which you transform and then returning from that transformative experience. So why would I use the language of rebirth if what we're really talking about is transformations and transitions within obviously our ordinary lifetime? Well, part of the reason is that I think in our culture, this modern Western culture, it's that much harder to talk about this process of deep change and deep change and deep transformation because we have this cultural narrative of constant growth that we're supposed to be always improving, always getting better. We're supposed to want to be on top. And also there's this idea that if you're experiencing good things in your life, like plenty of money, good health, lots of friends, whatever it is, that that's a sign of like God's grace or his favor to you. And these ideas have really deep roots, even thinking about the idea of evolution, which is so fundamental to biology these days. Charles Darwin actually objected to the term evolution. He preferred natural selection because this term evolution implies that a species is always getting better in some way. So we have these narratives as a culture of growth happening in this linear way. And I think what the idea of rebirth highlights is something from other cultures, which is that actually growth is cyclical. This idea of rebirth, it's not linear. It's the idea that we're born, we grow, we die, and then we come back. And so interpreted metaphorically, I think that's a really great description of the stages of our life. That it's not the case that we kind of become an adult, we reach a plateau, and then life is supposed to be more or less the same. We're just getting wealthier, whatever it is, happier all the time. Instead, I think the truth for many of us is that we go through stages of life. So we go through our childhood, and there's a point at which we have to give up being a child. There's a certain death of the old that's involved in order for us to be born as an adult. In the same way, when we approach our own middle age, which is where I am now, or when we approach older age, or as we approach our own physical death, there's also implicit in that rebirth model and understanding that the end of this phase is not the end of us. I think that recognition that each phase has to end for our next burst of growth to be possible, that's really important. And it also just feels more true to the lived experience of going through these transitions in our lives. 
So that's why we're going to be talking about rebirth in this course and using it in kind of a metaphorical way. So now let's talk about types of transitions. I want to start with two types of transitions that I've been thinking about recently. And I'm thinking of them as the butterfly type of transition and the snake type of transition. And in the butterfly type, we basically start out as a caterpillar. We build our chrysalis, we go inside the chrysalis and a, the caterpillar, it's sort of like its whole body just dissolves and gets rearranged. And then when it's ready to come out as a butterfly, it emerges as a very different creature. So that's a huge, deep transformation. The other type of transformation is what I'm thinking of as a snake transformation. And that's really, you're keeping the same shape, but you've outgrown, but you've outgrown your outer layer of skin. So when a snake grows, it has to shed its skin to be able to keep growing. And after it sheds, it may be more vulnerable, it may be more sensitive for a while, but it's not undergoing this massive type of transformation that a butterfly does when it enters its chrysalis. Those larger butterfly type transformations can feel, I think, more threatening to our sense of self than the snake type. And that's because we are fundamentally getting rearranged. There's a transformation of who we knew ourselves to be. And if you're in that chrysalis and who you know yourself to be has dissolved and something new hasn't come out yet, that can be a very, very deeply threatening time. It can just feel like complete chaos because even if you kind of know something new is going to come from this, that new version of yourself is not at all evident yet. The smaller snake type transformations can be less threatening because all you're doing is just shedding that outer layer. Your basic sense of self is remaining intact. And that's really our goal with spiritual practice is to be doing snake type transformations rather than these huge butterfly type transformations, at least when it comes to our regular practice. Since we're talking about life and rebirth and death and whatnot, I do want to say um, literal death is the biggest transition that we make. So that, if you want to have it as kind of the subtext of everything we talk about in this course, that's fine. It's too big a topic really to try and address in this course, but hopefully I'll address it later. But if you are interested in that or curious about it, I'd love to talk with you more about that. I want to just highlight another sort of division of this type of transformation that I've been thinking about, which is whether we chose the transformation or not. And obviously this doesn't break down all transitions into two simple categories. Often something has changed in our life, so we may or may not have a choice about that, and then we've chosen to make some other transition in order to adapt to that. So there's a lot of blurry gray area in the middle of this, but I do just want to say, uh, if you're coming to this course, not everyone is necessarily experiencing their transition with the same intensity or with the same level of difficulty. If your transition was something that was unchosen, like if you lost a loved one recently, if you were diagnosed with a serious illness, those can be some really serious catalysts for transition that we don't have a choice about. So those feel like more difficult forms of transition to make. Whereas if you chose maybe a new job or you decided to move somewhere new, those transitions, because we chose them, they can feel a little bit less threatening to our sense of self. So I just want to say that whatever transition you're dealing with or you're looking at making in the future, I hope this course can address that. And especially if you're doing the version with the uh, live discussions, maybe we can actually hear from each other and benefit from different types of perspectives on different types of transitions. The main point of this course though, is that we're all going to go through transitions in our lives anyway. So we might as well get as much benefit out of them as possible. So all the tools that you're going to learn in this course and all the exercises that we do, they're all really oriented toward that. There's a lot of content that we're going to cover in this course. And there's a lot of readings and viewings that I will suggest if you're interested in doing that, but I'm going to try and keep 
the ideas pared down to make them as simple as possible so that we can take them in and discuss them and take them into our lives together. So what's actually in this course? There, there are four weeks. Um, the first week is going to be an introduction to the major themes of the course. We're going to talk about the Bardo states, we're going to talk about the hero's journey, and we're going to do some meditation practices to help sort of plow the ground and start get a, getting us ready to really talk and practice about transitions in our lives. The second week, we're going to talk about uh, the first two stages of this process of transformation. So the way things were, and then the dissolution that happens when we leave that behind. The third week, we're going to talk about that space after the old has dissolved and before the new has really started coming together and the benefit we can get out of resting in that in-between space. And then the fourth week, we're going to talk about the process of the new really beginning to arise and what that's like as we exit that in-between stage. So I hope that if you're not already signed up, you can join us for this course, or if you are signed up, I'm really delighted and I can't wait to engage in these materials with you.